What's up guys? The TFT Reckoning Dawn of Heroes World Championship is coming up this weekend, October 1st. In it, 20 competitors from around the world will take their shot at the title of the world champion and their cut of the $250,000 prize pool. Last year, Korea took home the gold, but not before we saw just about every other region put up a fight. This time around, some players have returned and some new blood has emerged. As a primer for the event, I'm gonna give you guys my list of five players to watch at TFT Worlds. Now, let me preface with this. While this is a video of five players that I think will do well, this is not a power rankings video. This is a list of five players that I think will either make a deep run in the event or defy expectations of the average viewer. There's actually a lot of really interesting narratives and stories around these players, and I think a lot of people are missing them. So with that said, let's get started with number five. Coming in at number five is Euso Lucas. Lucas is the first seed from Brazil, and if you aren't familiar with him, let me help. Rank one Brazil, top 10 NA, and had an unbelievable run at regional finals that can only be rivaled by one other player on this list. Lucas had an average placement of 2.6 over the course of 11 games in the Brazilian regional finals. He placed first in the group stage and then went on to dominate the finals lobby with a 14 point lead over second place. From what I can tell, he seems to favor more of this fast eight style as most of his boards have Revenants and Teemo, which require you to make strong boards and end up getting to level eight quickly. Back in set three, we saw Slu put Brazil on the map in the Galaxies World Championship. I think that this time around, Lucas has the opportunity to do the same thing. At number four is Cheetu X. Cheetu X is the first seed from China who showed a level of consistency that is hard to find anywhere else. Unlike other regions, China played their regionals over the course of a week. In a game like TFT, the meta changes so quickly and optimizations emerge within a given meta to make a large impact on how a patch is played. And Cheetu X showed that he's able to quickly adapt. Cheetu X had an average placing of 3.5 during the event, a near half placement higher than the second best scorer. In the finals, Cheetu X sent everyone home early Early by ending the checkmate format after four games going 1-8-1-1 to win the tournament. But the story behind G2X is that he is playing for China's reputation in TFT. At the TFT Fates Championship, China had the most amount of players in the event and failed to qualify for top 8 with any of them. G2X is playing for redemption for China to show that they are still one of the strongest regions. Coming up at number 3 is Shurkane. Shurkane, aka the Polish champion, is the fourth seed from EU. But don't be confused by the seed, Shurkane is one of the strongest players players from Europe, and he's dominated the ladder through the entirety of 5.5. But one of the most interesting parts about Shurikane is actually his meteoric rise in TFT. In set 3, he was just a Grandmaster player, and in set 4, a middle-of-the-pack challenger player. But something clicked in set 5, and he was able to turn on the Jets and become one of the most dominant forces in Europe. His steady improvement from set to set has finally culminated in the World Championship, where he can prove that he is a world-class player. Another important thing to note about Shurikane is that he actually has quite a bit of tournament experience. He had two relatively strong finishes at the Polish tournament Ultra Liga 2 and Clash of Heroes. While most of the players at Worlds are seasoned veterans, it's important to have that tournament experience when you're going up against the best. Some people are saying that this is the weakest lineup that Europe has sent to Worlds so far, but I'm expecting Shurikane to put on a show and make a run. At number two is Dudu. Dudu is the second seed from Korea and he has definitely earned his spot. Going all the way back to the set 3 Galaxy qualifiers in Korea, Dudu was in a position to actually qualify for the World Championship back then. However, he fell short, placed 4th, and unfortunately had to watch the event from home. This time around, Dudu found himself in a similar situation just outside the top 3, but when push came to shove, he clutched it out with 3 straight top 4 finishes to qualify for Worlds. To be completely honest, I'm not too familiar with Dudu's playstyle, but we learned from the Fates Championship that Korea is the region to beat. If Dudu can compete there, then you better look out, because you know he's going to put up a fight to take that trophy home. And finally, at the number one spot, I have North America's Robin Songs. Maybe it's because I'm from NA. Maybe it's because he went 1-1-1-5-1-1 at the NA Regional Finals. Or maybe it's because he has a 2.6 average tournament placing among all of the set five tournaments he's competed in. And that doesn't even include his first place finish at the Duos Tournament Giant Slayer Series. Liquid's Robin Songs has shown a complete transformation in the last year, going from a relatively strong challenger player who quit his job to a North 
North American superstar who has dominated the NA scene. Robin's consistency is very hard to beat with wins across different formats and patches. With that said, this meta has not been as kind to Robin as the comps that he performed well with at the regional finals have all been nerfed. But his scrim results in the last couple days have actually been really solid, so I'm still expecting Robin to place top 8 and make a push to take home the gold. Now, I want to end this video with an honorable mention. This is a player who actually, despite being from a major region, is still kind of flying under the radar. That player is Spencer. Remember how I said that it's difficult to find a player who could rival Robin Song's tournament consistency? Well, Spencer does that and beats it. He's played invitationals, open brackets, duo tournaments, everything under the sun, and he has a 2.5 average placement. Spencer is the kind of player that plays it all. He plays reroll, he plays fast eight, everything in between. And when you watch his stream or check out his lol chess, you'll find that he actually does limit test his comps quite a bit. Spencer hasn't had the strongest scrim results from what I was able to find, but I believe that when it comes down to tournament, Spencer is gonna make a splash at the event and make a deep run. And those are my five players to watch at the TFT World championships coming up this weekend. Let me know in the comments who your five players are and who your dark horse for the event is. And make sure you tune into the TFT Reckoning Dawn of Hero World Championship this Friday, October 1st, and I'll catch you next time.